In this video, we'll be focusing on transduction attacks in the form of compromising the sensors. This is classed as a local attack and occurs when the attacker physically tampers with the sensors within the control system. To help demonstrate how this type of attack can vary, we will be focusing on two different types of process, a batch process and a continuous process. Batch process occurs on command and we usually produce one to two batches of the product at a time. In contrast, a continuous process does exactly what it says it does. It runs continuously. Examples of continuous processes are water treatment plants and power plants, whilst an example of a batch process is making bread. When people talk about these types of attacks, they often think about the attacks being of malicious intent, when often transduction attacks via the sensors occur accidentally. In some cases, this can be because workers at the facility have turned off a specific sensor that doesn't seem relevant to the factory at the time, but can cause problems later on. Other times, these attacks can be caused by a fault with the sensor. The first scenario we're going to look at is our water treatment factory. Now with this scene, you cannot visibly see the sensors, however there are multiple within the scene. The sensors within this scenario that we need to focus upon are the three that reside within the tank. The first of these sensors is used to measure how full our water tank is. This allows us to prevent the tank from overflowing and ensure it fully discharges prior to refilling. Within the process of water and disinfection, we also need two chemical sensors. One is to measure the amount of chlorine per milligrams of water, and the other is to check the pH level inside the water tank. These sensors are vital to ensuring that the water has been fully disinfected with the chlorine and then returned to a safe drinking state for human consumption. As you can see, within a normal run of the scenario, and all the sensors are working correctly, the tank fills with water to just below the maximum volume. The digital display on the control panel then links to our chlorine and pH sensors, to show that the water's pH is being decreased as the chlorine is added, allowing the optimal disinfection environment. The water then stays in the tank for a period of time whilst being mixed prior to the chlorine being removed and the pH returning to a safe drinking level. The water tank is then fully drained and the process repeats. If a sensor, such as the one that measures the pH level, was to be compromised, this could have a devastating effect on all natural life that the water comes into contact with. As you can see here, if the volume sensors were to, were to be attacked, the fill valve on the tank may not close at the correct time, leading to a mass overflow of the tank, flooding the factory and potentially causing lots of damage to all the equipment, plus leaving a lasting impact on the water supply in the area. The other scenario we're looking at in this video, and that you can see on screen here, is our bakery scene. It does not encompass the entire bakery, only the part of the process where the ingredients are added, the batch is split into loaves, and it is proofed and cooked. At the beginning of the factory line, we have a start button and a stop button, which allow the supervising member of staff to directly start and stop the batch process. We then have a conveyor for each of our ingredient types, flour, yeast, salt and sugar, additives, water and oil. Each of the ingredients additions is regulated by a timer that is triggered by either a diffuser sensor or a retroreflective sensor. The conveyors for the rolling ovens and proofing ovens are also controlled by these sensors. Depending on what sensor within this factory has been attacked, this can have different consequences. If an ingredient sensor is attacked, then the ingredients may not be correct within the loaves, causing it to have inconsistent tastes and textures. Whereas if an oven sensor was attacked, the oven could be set to the wrong temperature, causing a batch to be either undercooked or overcooked. As you can see, in a standard run through of a batch being made, the bread is stopped for the correct time under each shoot of ingredients, and the ovens and proofers are triggered correctly. If, however, as I'm about to demonstrate, one of our ingredient sensors, such as the yeast one, were to be tampered with, the batch would not stop to allow the ingredients to be added in. This would result in a ruined batch of bread. You can see this happening here. The same issue would occur if the oven sensor were tampered with and the oven did not know that the batch was there to be cooked, resulting in undercooked bread. This may only have a small impact in the short term, but in long term, this can cause mass money loss for the company producing the bread. <laughs> 